Right. So, how did you decide when to start introducing all the characters? Uh, you mean like the various villains and characters yeah, yeah. that come up? Gut. I mean, really, I mean, really, it was kind of an instinct thing, you know. Um, a lot of it is like when we when we map out the season in, in the writers' room and we're looking at it all. Um, we have people kind of like you want people to kind of like their storylines to climax and then like have a denouement. And like, so we're saying, okay, Penguins had a really huge story for this period, and he's going to be you know kind of like kind of like resting for a while. So then it's like a great two episode arc to bring in Scarecrow for those times. So we you know it's, it's like you have these, all these intersecting like sine curves and cosine curves that are going through. That's math. <laughs> uh, through the season so it was really just kind of like trying to balance everything you know? and uh, you know you kind of get those feelings too where you, you'll tell we'll tell like a real like a Falcon on Maroney story for like two episodes which can feel very like mobby mobby so then you're saying oh well now I really want like a story that's going to feel more super villain so we'll do like Jonathan Strange or a Red Hood episode or something like that so it really is like a feel just like a yeah. Can you feel? Can you give us a sense? Of, <laughs> That's pretty specific, huh? <laughs> yeah. okay. Can you give us a sense of the direction going into kind of as we start heading toward the finale, like yes. you know, like an overview of where we're going? Sure. There's like going to be there's a three episode arc that's going to begin in 19 and goes into like 20. Uh, 21, yeah, that's three. <laughs> Which is, um, Gordon's investigating the serial killer that's going to impact him in his really personal way that's going to have, like, repercussions all through season two, like, really, really? damaging. Um, the Penguin story that he's been running up against, like, his, um, uh, his kind of, like, rise. This, se this season we kind of thought of his rise in the Penguin. But the Penguin sort of comes to, like, a really bloody and dark conclusion in the finale as we see, like, all of his plans and machinations finally kind of, like, erupt and, like, kind of start to rip Gotham apart. Um, and we see Gordon's, um, uh, kind of, like, butting heads with the establishment inside the, the GCPD as well, kind of, like, coming apart. And then you see other characters who are coming forward and, like, really um, doing things and you see sides of them as they take, like, those evolutionary steps forward to becoming the people they're going to become, Selena, Enigma, Bruce, all those characters take those big jumps forward going, oh, I see you actually are on the path to becoming the person you're going to be, that we all it's very hard to pace out knowing how young our Bruce Wayne is in yes. this show and how much fun it will be to get to these villains when they're their full-fledged themselves. Right. How do you guys handle that in, in the record of the instinct to want to go to the most fun place but know that you've got to, like, <laughs> draw it out and draw it out a little bit? You know, it's... I mean, I, I think a lot, a lot of times... What, I don't know, it's the telling the origin stories, we've, we've taken a lot of like steps even further back, you know? Like, even telling like a Jonathan Crane origin story, we, we actually focused on the father, not on Crane himself, you know? Um, and we, t we tried to take a lot of like lateral steps for those things too. Like, everybody knows the Red Hood story that we can read, like, in the Alan Moore story. So we just took like a different Red Hood story that we tried to say, okay, let's take all of these and go even further back in time and try to tell an interesting story. So. I don't know. I mean, honestly, <laughs> it's one of those things where we always kind of go, we know we can't go there. So what's the most interesting version that we can tell here that will make the journey there? Like, it's as if we all know we're driving to Chicago. But on the way to Chicago, you're like, hey, let's stop in Reno. This is actually going to be a lot of fun. Oh, my God. We got shot in Reno. <laughs> Whatever. So, so many of the characters you have to keep because we know they have a future. Right. But, um, but Jada announced that she wasn't coming back as fish. So is there a potential for her to come back, or are you happy that you actually have a character you can tell off? Um, I mean, I think I, I don't know if she's going to come back or not. You know, I mean, uh, I, I feel like you guys have to watch the finale and see what happens, and then I also live in a world in which you know characters can come back frequently. You know, and also DC has been really flexible about characters who we in the canon know, oh, they survive because they do. They have to do X later. Those characters, as we'll see going forward, even in this season, they are not invulnerable. Some of those characters who everyone will expect to survive will not survive, and which I think will make things like exciting because when you actually see, see that other oh, characters have a target on their back, um, you, that you know that nobody's safe, and then you can watch that name or whatever gets reinvented later on in another fashion. So. Are there are there any like major locations from like Batman lore, like the Batcave that we might be seeing in the near future? Possibly. Uh, yes, there are some major locations in the lore that we'll see in this season that you'll watch in the season. Um, okay, I'm not really going to say more than that, but you will see them in the next couple of episodes. Where again, it, it, that are gonna, it's going to be part of those like when I was talking about those big character steps forward. We'll see them becoming those. Big.
Yeah. Well, uh, one of the things you have had, in addition to extra episodes added this season, you also got the very, very early season two reels. Can you just talk about how that kind of changed your writing process for this season and yeah. what that might mean for us, what that will mean for season two? Sure. Um, we originally thought we were doing 16 episodes. So we had arced out the season to end at 16 episodes, so we had to kind of like start building things out again. Like, we actually weren't going to do Jonathan Crane this year. Um, when we got those extra six, ep six episodes, we did that. We built in the fish getting kidnapped by the Dollmaker uh, storyline that had not existed before, you know? Um, we weren't going to do a Red Hood story. Uh, we had not planned on doing flying flying Graysons, you know. So we actually we brought in some of the characters that we were actually planning on saving for later, frankly. Um, but this next year, way like it, the early pickup has affected our storytelling. Now it's like we're arcing the whole twenty two seasons. Yes, so now, so we actually know where we're going, where we're ending up, and so hopefully it'll feel. Um, yeah, feel a little less panicked. <laughs> I doubt that. But. And you're bringing in Lucas Fox. We are bringing in Lucius Fox. Can we uh, He's played by Chris Chalk, who's a great actor, um, and just uh, also a fan of the material too, which is always great to have on the show. Um, and he has a small appearance this year, but he's going to play a much larger role next season. So, as we've seen, like Bruce, like um, young Bruce, like investigating what's going on in his um, family's company, that mystery will kind of like deepen next year, and Lucius starts to play a role. As Bruce doesn't know who he is, yet, you know, and doesn't know like, what his intentions really are. As they kind of like find their way towards a relationship next year, and he helps them like uncover the mystery. So. What can you say about Last Lucius, question. What, okay. about Lucia's trajectory in the, the last few episodes? Because obviously she is further apart, set apart from kind of everything that's going on. Right she does, I mean, we will see her with all the other characters by the end of the season. And obviously Penguin's final like um, rise couldn't happen without Fish being a part of it, you know? So we'll see the two of them kind of come back together. <clears throat> like, yeah, in a really, hopefully, satisfying way.